In this video, we're gonna share the difference between a renovation and a retrofit, and we'll also break down the work that we're doing for this net zero energy retrofit of this 1960s cottage. If you missed the first video where the client, Dana, introduces you to the project, you can check that out. The link is in the description below. And a huge thank you to our sponsors, Rockwell Insulation and 475 High Performance Building Supply. Because of them, we're able to create this amazing content and you get to watch it for free. Before we get too far into the video, let's first chat about renovation versus retrofit. Depending on who you're talking to, they may mean the same thing, but for myself, they actually mean something different. A renovation would be the process of improving something that's broken or something that is outdated or something that's damaged. That would be a renovation. So it's not looking at the energy portion of it. So it's not necessarily making the building healthier, more comfortable, or more efficient. It's just improving the aesthetics of the building. Whereas a retrofit focuses on making the building more efficient or making it healthier, making it more comfortable. That to me is the two differences. One focuses on mostly on aesthetics. The other one focuses on the energy, but aesthetics come with that as well. Some organizations will use the terms interchangeably. For example, the Canadian Home Builders Association has a program called Renomark. Renomark is where contractors pay a membership fee and meet a certain criteria to be able to market themselves as a qualified builder slash renovator to prospective clients. So they use the term net zero renovation instead of retrofit when it comes to improving the energy efficiency of your home to stay on the mark with their branding. Now the city of Ottawa, where we are located, has a program called Better Homes Ottawa. It provides a low interest loan tied to the property, not to the individual or the owner, to cover the costs of home energy improvements. They use the term energy efficiency retrofits. On this project, our client Dana is looking to achieve net zero energy ready renovation status. Because this is linked through CHBA, they do call it a renovation, but we will call it a retrofit throughout the video. The other thing that's a little different here is the word ready. What that means is that her home, once it's completed, will be ready for solar panels. And at that point, that's when it'll be net zero. Here are seven factors that will help you indicate whether or not your home is a good candidate for this certification. Number one, it is a pre-1980s construction home. Number two, it's a simple house and it has a simple roof shape. Number three, it's an old exterior wall finish. Number four, it has adequate space at the perimeter of the home. Number five, there have been no recent major upgrades. Number six, it has low deferred maintenance. Number seven, it has few or no observable hazards. To determine the target for your home, you're going to need to get an energy audit. This report will provide you with an EnerGuide rating, which is your annual energy usage in gigajoules, along with a list of upgrades to fulfill. We're gonna go through the upgrades in our client's energy audit. Based on Dana's energy audit, her home uses 159 gigajoules per year based on standard operating conditions. Now all the planned upgrades for Dana's home would bring us down to 55 gigajoules per year. However, she is doing this in a two phase approach. So we're focusing on a lot of the low hanging fruit as part of the phase one of this project. What that allows for Dana to have is a healthy, comfortable and efficient home while she plans for the next phase of her project. This project involves the following upgrades. So number one would be the heating and cooling system. Those are gonna be upgraded to an Energy Star air source heat pump. Next is the air sealing. And the majority of the air sealing that'll be done during this phase of the project on the walls will be done through using 475 high performance building supply and their materials. So we're using the Adhero on the exterior of the walls. 
Adhero is a self-adhering monolithic vapor permeable membrane and a durable weather resistive barrier. This will later connect to the Intello Plus, which we will have on the underside of the new trusses once phase two commences. The air barrier on the foundation is a combination of spray foam and rigid insulation with tape provided by 475 as well. We are also replacing all the windows with Energy Star certified triple glaze windows and upgrading all of the doors. The front door will change location as part of phase two of this project though. The hot water system is upgraded to an air source heat pump. And the roof will be rebuilt as part of phase two, but in phase one, we are increasing attic insulation from the R25 that was there before. We've installed two layers of R28 Comfort Bat 24 inches on center Rockwell insulation, and we laid them flat and overlapped them in the current attic. The reason we did this is because the insulation will be reused in the scissor trusses of phase two. Dana really wants to have a cathedral ceiling coming through the main part of the home, and this is the insulation that will go into that new roof system. Around the perimeter of the eaves, we will be using a blown in loose fiberglass of about four to 10 inches because of how low the current roof comes at the top of the wall. This should give us about R30. We'll increase basement wall insulation. Originally there was an R14 Rockwell comfort bat and we are upgrading to R24 with two inches of XPS, which will give us R10 and then reusing the R14 Rockwell comfort bat that was already there. If you're not familiar with Rockwell Comfort Bat, it is a semi-rigid stonewall bat insulation for exterior wood and steel stud applications in both new construction and in renovations. It features a unique flexible edge design to compress as the bat is inserted, then spring back, expanding the bat against the frame studs to give a complete fill. This flexibility ensures the expected R value is achieved and maintained. Non-combustible and fire resistant comfort bat will not develop toxic smoke or promote flame spread, even when exposed directly to a fire. It also offers water and moisture resistance and excellent sound absorbency. Comfort bat is an effective way to improve a home's energy efficiency. It is Green Guard Gold certified and contributes to a healthier indoor air environment. We are increasing basement header R value. Originally, the header space was empty, so we are using a blown in polyurethane spray foam for approximately five inches, which will give us R30. There's also a small crawl space that will be increasing the insulation and air sealing in, but this will likely be done as part of phase two. We will increase the main wall insulation from R12 to R26. And we're doing that by installing R14 Rockwell Comfort Bat between the studs. And on the exterior, we installed three inches of Rockwell Comfort Board 80, which gives us an additional R12 of continuous insulation. If you're not familiar with Rockwell Comfort Board 80, it is a rigid stone wool non-structural insulation board designed for use as an exterior continuous insulation. It does not produce smoke or propagate flames, keeping occupants safe and reducing property damage in the event of a fire. Comfort Board 80 has also received acceptance for the following uses, such as non-structural thermal insulation in non-fire resistive rated dwellings, exterior perimeter insulation around foundation, under flat concrete slabs, a component of residential wood frame cathedral ceilings, and in areas where probability of termite infestation is very heavy. Now, every home is different, so you're gonna have to work closely with your contractor and with your energy advisor if your goal is to hit net zero energy ready or net zero energy status. Every home will have a different orientation. Every home will have a different design. Every home will have different shading. And that's why what we did on this project may not work for your house. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so because then you'll get notified for when we release the next video on this project where we will get into the reasons why we chose Rockwell as the insulation. And even before they sponsored it, we were using this product because we believe in it so much. We'll also get into the installation techniques and we'll get into air and vapor barrier details and all of the transitions for this particular project.
Once again, I want to thank the sponsors, Rockwell Insulation and 475 High Performance Building Supply. If you want to learn more about their products, you can check out the links in the video description below. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.